projection working, right? Absolutely. Cool. So let's go ahead. So <clears throat> today we're going to... You have to excuse me. I absolutely hate hearing my voice over speakers. So today we're going to cover just real quick who we are. I'm Randy Perriman from Dell. I am the solution architect for the Dell Red Hat um, OpenStack solution. And I'm Nick Barset, Director of Product Management for OpenStack at Red Hat. And we're going to be covering why Dell and Red Hat have an OpenStack partnership, why Dell and Red Hat do an OpenStack solution, and what our reference architecture and the solution is, a quick demo of Instance HA, and then take your questions. So why Dell Red Hat has a cloud solutions? We have a unique co-engineered solution because it's comprehensive. We use Red Hat, of course, as our Linux, sorry, Red Hat Linux OpenStack platform. It's extended for enhancing multiple OpenStack projects, and when we do that work, we do do it all code upstreamed. Finally, one of the most important pieces is that we have a tested, validated solution that people can deploy with confidence and repeat. The two companies together have over 15 years of partner green, making enterprises successful, practical scale-out configurations. We have proven platforms, hard and secure code, and we finally streamline our OpenStack moving parts. What does it take to make a, the solution? It takes a whole bunch of people to do that. We have the Dell OpenStack Solution Engineering, Red Hat System Engineering the combined Dell and Red Hat quality assurance teams, Dell storage engineering, Red Hat cloud practice teams, the Red Hat OpenStack, and the Red Hat tools team. A lot of people go together to make this solution. It's not just two or three people. It's a, it's a series of teams, and it takes both companies working together. OpenStack for the enterprise. What we are trying to do is come up with a way for a stable, reliable, and repeatable business. We validate the product from end to end. It's a fully supported software. We have, it's also scalable. It's a solution to allow you to become agile. We do have performance-tuned configurations, extended lifecycle support, and we have the expertise to complement your in-house expertise. And so one thing that uh, is very important to understand is deploying OpenStack always start by configuring your hardware. And I would say that this is generally the most critical part of any OpenStack deployment. How well are you going to get your hardware ready before you start deploying? And the great thing we have been doing uh, with Dell in these four versions is we've been learning on how to define an architecture that makes sense and teach our uh, customers how to implement it. A reference architecture is not just a piece of paper that is nice to display uh, on the web, right? Well, mm -hmm. paper, web, uh, doesn't work, PDF. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> but it's actually a shortcut that we are offering together. And it's more than a shortcut. In these four versions, we've been adding features every time. And really, right now, in version four of Jetstream, we now have a version that is... Whoa, Larson, hello. Um, a very flexible, very modular, uh, and we've added uh, lots of choices in the deployment. And this work is going on. You can see in the next few slides that we are going to be adding to it. Um, right now, what we've been adding in version 4 is three very key things. First, what we call guest or VM high availability. What do you do when a host goes down? OpenStack services, what's the API going to do if one of the... Uh, um, controller nodes uh, disappears. And the most important thing, deployment automation uh, and the patching 
of the deployment and the wall maintenance of the environment. Because it's not import just important to set up the initial thing, it's also important to maintain it over time. So, as Nick mentioned, we're up to version four. We started out at version three. We brought in a 10 node architecture with 10 gig networking. We made it into a turnkey system. It's all based off of the Dell PowerEdge R630s, R730XDs with Dell networking gear. Um, it was based at that time on the OpenStack platform from Red Hat of number six. Um, we also introduced Neutron VRP. Um, active, active, high availability of our controllers, and support of multiple concurrent storage backends. In version four, we brought in the additional Dell networking components. We revved it up to the S4048s and 3048s. We added in the S6000 series at the same time and revved the OpenStack platform up to number seven. We also brought in instance live migration and we've added some optional um, servers of the Dell PowerEdge R430s and R730s. And finally, as Nick mentioned, in the current release, we're now adding Instant 8J. And we are going to be adding in the Midicore Enterprise MetaNet. This is the taxonomy that we base everything on. We build up from the very bottom. At the physical infrastructure, we start with the Dell PowerEdge R630s and 730XDs, along with Dell Networking. We build on top of that the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And then we bring in all the OpenStack components. One of the pieces that we bring in as part of our solution, that, which is real interesting, is the Ceph storage. That gives you the ability to have an object storage or a block storage across all the different tool sets and across your virtual machines. So, who doesn't know Ceph in this room? Not that many people, uh, as far as I can tell. But really, why are people so attracted by Ceph? Well, the first thing is co the cost efficiency. Uh, you can use standard hardware and deploy as much storage uh, as you want. You can select the type of drives that you're going to deliver. And you're going to get the performance, the resilience, and the scalability that you need based on your growth. You don't have to prepay a given size of equipment to get to it. In terms of resiliency, you can now have Ceph be fully resilient on one side or on multiple sides. You are in a fully software-defined environment, so you can benefit from a, a very rapid innovation cycle, community, driven uh, innovations. So that means that if you really care about a specific feature, you can inject it and get it into the software later on. And really, there is no scaling limit to the capacities of Ceph. So when we went to go build 401, and 4.0, we used certain target use cases. We looked at today's apps, developers self-service, storage as a service. Um, we, like I said before, we based it on components from Dell PowerEdge servers and Dell networking. We also have optional Dell storage of the PS, which is the peer storage arrays, or the SC, which is the compellent arrays. We have Dell and Red Hat engineering services as part of it. Dell Red Hat OpenStack 7. Um, we've got the features in there is the host maintenance mode, a whole bunch of networking co-engineered, meaning that we work together to make that happen. We validate this solution for you before it comes into the customer's hands. And then finally, instance high availability is new to us. So how does instance high availability work? So before this, what we had is the ability to uh, migrate machines away from a host. But if the host dies suddenly, live migration doesn't work, right? You need something that is going to discover that your host has disappeared so that your VM can be restarted elsewhere. 
we had this functionality called evacuate, which is a very bad name <laughs> inside of OpenStack. I would love to, for it to have been called resurrect because this is really what, what it is, that existed, that uh, uh, allowed to resurrect VMs from a failed host and reschedule them elsewhere. It was working so and so, but with Kilo, we were able to enhance that and do a, a little bit more than that. We were able to uh, drive this into an automated fashion by adding um, a pacemaker remote, which is a very massively scalable version of pacemaker, nothing to do with the traditional grandfather, well, it's not that old, but um, <laughs> pacemaker. Um, we're able to monitor hundreds of instances, uh, or actually physical nodes, and detect within less than 30 seconds the disappearance of a node and force the call to the evacuate function so that all the VMs that were running on this host that just died would be respun. And as you're going to see, this respinning is amazingly fast. There is one more thing that is delivered in Liberty, which is going to make that a l even a little bit faster, which is the ability to mark a host down into the Nova database so that we are really sure the rescheduling is not going to reschedule on this host that has died, but Nova doesn't know about it. Right now, we have to wait for a full watchdog cycle before we can do the respinning. Once we've got this uh, mark host down functionality, it will be instantaneous. Um, I already covered uh, <laughs> all of it a little quicker than the slide. Sorry. So <laughs> moving on to additional pieces of high availability, we built the hardware around the idea of having it highly available. We've built all the um, PowerEdge servers with RAID drives for all the OSs, dual network cards with bonded that are bonded across the cards, dual power supplies, networking's built in a leaf and spine architecture so that no single switch will cause loss of a data flow with VLT and VRRP across the layer two or layer three. The network is highly available. Every node has all the networks required for its functionality. We've separated the solution infrastructure networks into various categories, such as the solution private, the public external, internal for management. Each category shares NICs across the nodes with VLANs covering the per networking flow. It's extensible. No need to additional, add additional NICs. You can just add additional VLANs as needed. It, um, every two bonded NICs for performance. I don't like the way that's worded, sorry. The implications though is if you're using MTU sizes, it is per category that are shared. And finally, we lock OpenStack Neutron into VLAN mode for this release. So I think we, 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 can, we can say that what we're delivering is a very stable, highly available uh, hardware platform Yes. on which we are delivering virtual appliances that are highly available. So highly available on highly available is Good. enterprise grade. Right. Um, this is the logical network of the, the current release. Um, as you can see, everything is across either bonds using VLs, VLANs. Um, if you want more information, see us. We can get you a copy of the reference architecture, which is online. So when you look at uh, RHEL OSP 7, or the real name is Red Hat Enterprise Linux, OpenStack Platform 7, um, it's a mouthful, isn't it? Um, it's based on Kilo. Um, we have done a lot of work on the deployment of it, uh, making it easier uh, to deploy, and this is uh, ongoing work that we've been doing with Dell. We've uh, already mentioned that Compute Host High Availability is uh, now fully there. We've got uh, Neutron uh, and uh, Open vSwitch uh, security mechanism that have been uh, enhanced. We uh, have the first version uh, allowing uh, a full IPv6 experience. We support incremental backup. 
we are integrating uh, with SLinux. Uh, that has been there for quite a while, but we are making it even more uh, robust and covering container technologies. Um, we have uh, great alignment with OpenStack uh, um, API so that uh, the security matching process uh, covers all of them. We have um, Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux 7 as uh, 7.1 to be more precise and soon 7.2 uh, as the host OS. We've got uh, enhanced uh, HA at the database layer for uh, MariaDB using Galera and HA proxy as uh, the front for it. Um, we've been, uh, uh, of course, as for every release, hardening uh, everything so that uh, it is uh, benefiting from our experience in delivering uh, security and a reliable environment. And as all of our uh, versions for the past three cycles, we are supporting them for three years. So the reference architecture combines what each of our companies bring to the table. From Dell, we bring the best hardware for OpenStack, our servers, our switches, our storage. We're based, like I said before, our servers are on the PowerEdge R630 for the computes, controllers, R730 XDs for your storage. We also bring in the Dell Equalogic or Pure Storage arrays and the Dell Storage Center or the Compellent arrays. We base it all off of the Dell networking, the S4048s and 3048s, which are the latest revisions. And then Red Hat brings the best software. We have the rail with high availability and load balancing tools for OpenStack. And then jointly, we engineer this together. We've architected, designed, integrated, optimized it. We have a reference architecture that's got a balanced architecture that's for performance to dollars. It's scalable, it's extensible, and we have support for it. We also use automation, the OpenStack form and installer at this time. In the future, we're going to be using RDO manager and director. All of this brings a great solution for you. So why is this industry leading? Well, first of all, because it's an open solution from end to end. There is not a single piece of the solution that is uh, proprietary in any way. Of course, uh, we have to uh, customize the uh, deployment of OpenStack for the given hardware. But these are just configuration uh, work that we are doing. We are not uh, adding any specific drivers that we are not uh, contributing uh, back upstream. Um, it's also an environment that is very agile. Agile in the sense that you can grow it and you can scale it back down based on your demand. It's allowing you to become agile. It's also an infrastructure that is delivering the control that you need. Because when you deploy such a solution, understanding what is happening with it is a very key uh, uh, element. And it's also very innovative in the sense that you're directly every six months, uh, or even more than that, because we are uh, having uh, minor releases that are uh, feature bearing, uh, benefiting from the feature that on which we've been working, which allow you to deliver emo even more features to your users. So these are just various design components that we've taken into consideration in designing an enterprise grade solution for you. From Red Hat certified solutions that are end to end. It's integrate, enterprise grade in that it's scalable, secure, open, one stop. We take our experience and our innovation and it allows you to have innovation without risk. It also addresses many enterprise use cases and addresses the gaps that you are looking to have taken care of. The components, once again, we start with the Dell hardware. We have a Dell reference architecture which outlines the basics of how this is all put together using Red Hat solutions. And we also bring in the experience of Dell professional services along with Red Hat professional services side by side to make your solutions work. So what's coming up ahead? Well, as uh, Randy mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, uh, integration with the triple O implementation uh, 
that we use inside of our RHEL OSP called Director, um, which uses Ironic for the discovery and the deployment of the nodes, which uses Heat for the automated deployment uh, and the orchestration of uh, all the nodes, whether they are uh, controllers or uh, storage nodes or uh, um, the uh, compute nodes. Um, and we are adding a, a lot of validation. Validation in pre-flight mode. Before we start uh, a deployment, we want to make sure that the environment is exactly set up the way we want before we go into uh, a messy process. In flight, as we are moving forward step by step into the deployment, we want to make sure that everything has happened as it should be, by the book. So we are running tests such as service spec to validate that this is happening. And at the end, we want to be able to guarantee the customer that the configuration that uh, is being delivered with does integrate completely uh, and uh, seamlessly and does provide the performance that he is expecting. So we have a full uh, validation suite at the end. Um, of course, if you want to extend uh, your cloud or retract it, you'll be able to do that uh, as part of the same tooling. So that's what's coming up ahead. Um, in RHEL OSP 8, we are going to allow uh, automatic um, uh, and in-place migration, meaning people running uh, RHEL OSP 7 will be able to get to uh, version 8 without having to set up another cloud or do any kind of magic. Um, this is going to apply to uh, minor releases as well, but that's a, a lot less impressive in general because there is no uh, API version changes. Um, we are going to uh, improve this uh, instance of high availability uh, that I uh, the way I described earlier with this uh, uh, Marcos DOM uh, feature that is arriving with Liberty. Um, there is network quality of service uh, that is going to be delivered. That's uh, a key request from uh, many enterprise customer to be able to throttle which customer is using what on their cloud. Um, the ability to do non-disruptive backups, you know, uh, ability to say, hey, I want to do a backup, but let's not interrupt the work that is happening in this VM in order to do so. So uh, this uh, is a key element also uh, for many enterprises that want to guarantee the security of their data. Um, replication API is going to allow for uh, the, the block replication to happen in a way that is going to enable disaster recovery scenario much simpler. And finally, um, new image uh, signing and encryption uh, mechanism, ensuring that there is n less chances that someone is going to come and mess up with the images that you've preferred uh, for your tenants. And that's uh, very similar to what we've been doing for ages with uh, RPM packages, for example. That's just a few of the f uh, functionality. And before we get to the QA, we have uh, this uh, impressive demonstration so that Randy has Hopefully you all can see this I, up here. What we have up here is I have three, four nodes here. The large one on the left-hand side is a controller node and then three um, Nova computes. This cluster was built up literally in the last 24 hours. Um, it has got the latest patches to run for us to do high availability. So the goal here is I'm going to throw a panic onto the one Nova compute that is running for our, <coughs> I'm sorry, on the Nova compute that is, has, we have one instance right now. So if I do a Nova list, as you can see, I have a single instance running right now. And Yeah, and it is running on I reach Nova one. Nova it's one. running on Nova one, so let's go over here to Nova one and do a echo.
and we just panicked Nova 1. By the way, this is back in Austin, Texas that we are connected to, so it's going to be slow here and there. And within the next minute, Pacemaker will notice that Nova 1, as you can see, has gone down. Still showing Nova 1. We're going to see, we should see some KVM over either on Nova 2 or 3 in a second show up. I should say within the minute, not a second. So yeah, we've got to wait for that watchdog to happen so that uh, Nova doesn't reschedule on, this, on the wrong host. Soon we'll be able to get rid of that. Ah, it moved over to Nova 3. And so what happened there is Pacemaker noticed that Nova 1's down. It disconnected all of the instances, which is the one. And now, as you can see down here in the bottom right-hand side, we now have it running on Nova 3. In the meanwhile, Pacemaker is now restarting Nova 1. Let's see. Which one? Do I have one on here for it? No. Oh. Sorry. Anyways, we're going to start here because it will take about five minutes for the compute node to come back online. But what's happening now is Pacemaker is restarting Nova 1 and bringing it back up, and it will then bring it back into the pool and bring it back online in order for it to be used. Um, I can do a PCS status, and you'll see... Down here at the very bottom, Nova 1 is stopped. We'll leave it sitting here in a few minutes. We'll check it. In the meanwhile, is there any questions? Yes. Okay, so part of the configuration does use shared storage, and that's actually one of the requirements in order for this to work properly is using shared storage because when the host goes offline, it has to be able to bring up a virtual machine, that same virtual machine that was running, and it will reconnect it. Um, the but actually, it, it will work with, if you don't have any shared storage, but it will restart from no data. So it's right. less interesting. <laughs> yes. Yes, it would restart the image. Whatever image you use to create that um, particular virtual machine, it would actually recreate it on one of the other nodes for you. But of course, you would have lost any data that was there. With shared storage, you don't lose the data. Which or is if you're booting from, uh, uh, from uh, Cinder uh, as well. Yes. Yes, sir. Is this a bundle package for the client, for the, both the hardware and the software? Yes. Can I, can I add the uh, Red Hat Cloud form on top as well? Yes, you can. Oh, yes. Is there another subscription for the cloud form? Yes. At, yes. at the moment, yes. Says the. So for the external user, they will have lost connectivity potentially for uh, up to about 90 seconds at this time. And as we perfect this, it will hopefully get shorter. We're hoping to get within 30 seconds. That's our yeah. hope. In fact, one of the processes you see keep popping up here is the Neutron Open V switch, and it, that's one of the reasons why it became very busy is because it picked up the new networking when the node moved over.
But don't confuse this with live migration. Uh, the, the, the customer using a service will lose connection. It's not going to be reestablished automatically. We'll need to uh, recreate the TCP connection to his last host. It's not like uh, in the case of a live migration where we maintain the full uh, TCP flow. Right, because you've lost a host in this particular case. Correct. Yeah. The, the, we, we are not, sa the only thing that is being uh, restored is what was saved to disk. And uh, TCP connection status is only memory thing. We don't do memory copy yet. Well, I don't know if we'll ever do that. <laughs> Any other questions? This is the node rebooting. <laughs> I was wondering what was taking so long. So I found it. Okay, so uh, on the hardware side, it's a second tune or it's just an early side? You know, you have only one hardware and one for it in the bundle tune. So the reference architecture is built on one set of platform, the R630 for all the computes, controllers, and what we call a solution admin host, which is what is used to deploy the solution with. The Ceph nodes are PowerEdge R730XDs. Um, we do allow PowerEdge R430s or PowerEdge R730s as optional compute nodes, but not controllers at this time. So what is the maximum consumption support? What? Max nodes, maximum nodes. Maximum nodes at this time is three racks worth, which is approximately 60 nodes. Which is a lot of VM already. And let's see, Nova 1 is now online, so theoretically. And uh, one more question on the testnet side. I mean, now, it used to be an employee to say, but it was not a solution demanded by enterprises, right? So have you rewrite the testnet app altogether for this solution? So again, it's not pacemaker that we are, well, for this particular function, it's not pacemaker that we're using, but pacemaker remote. It, it starts with the same name has the same philosophy, but works very differently. Uh, and it's a much more scalable design for cloud uh, project. Uh, go check the, the differences, uh, they, they, they are quite significant. And we, while we are using Pacemaker for the high availability of uh, the uh, controllers, which are uh, a small group of server within the scalability of Pacemaker old style, for uh, the, the, in order to be able to support 60 node or even further than this, we needed to uh, use another project than Pacemaker Formal, but uh, which is called Pacemaker Remote. And as you can see, now that it's back online, Pacemaker has noticed it, and now everything has it being used again. A hybrid cloud? We do not have support of that at this time. Is it possible? Yes. So if, as uh, somebody else mentioned earlier, you are adding a tool such as Cloud Forms mm -hmm. to manage your environment, mm -hmm. then you have this uh, hybridity enabled with the current solution. Uh, because Cloud Forms is a tool that uh, al allows to use multiple providers, mm -hmm. one for OpenStack, one for AWS, one for VMware at the same time, and relaunch the same operation on any of the provider uh, simultaneously, sequentially, whatever workflow you, you wish uh, to be using. However, you have to make sure that you design your deployment of your application in a way that is reusable across multiple clouds. And for this, hey, I think that's one of the reasons why we acquired Ansible uh, last week. <laughs> <laughs>
You can change everything you want. Okay. Uh, we just guarantee simplicity so if you stick with the, the design. So the goal of the reference architecture is to allow you to be able to come up quickly and effectively. We've been, we've spent many hours, like I said, the, this demo was literally put together. We had it running last week. Somebody hopped on there and erased one of the servers. And one of my engineers in the last 24 hours rebuilt it. And the only reason we were able to do that is because we can repeat the installations on this hardware consistently. And the goal is to be allow you to get up, run, and be able to start working on your applications quickly and effectively in a known good OpenStack environment. So when you say someone, it was actually someone from Red Hat. Yeah, not intentionally, <laughs> but decided to install a software that uh, reset the environment. Happens. <laughs> Just before the demo, you know, the special demo effect. For fortunately, someone noticed it yesterday. Yes, sir, okay. Uh, what other features, enterprise features, uh, are you working on uh, going forward for uh, So um, the, the very next one we're going to benefit from is the capacity to do rolling upgrades. Uh, this is something that uh, is joint work uh, from Dell, uh, Intel, and Red Hat uh, as part of the uh, end run for the enterprise. So basically the problem we have is when you do an upgrade right now, you need to upgrade all of the nodes and the controller at the same time. Why? Because we don't support version mismatch, right? And this is not acceptable in real life. You don't want to have to bring everything down and everything back up. Well, you don't have a choice at this point. But <laughs> if you could avoid it, uh, that would be a lot better. If you could do, uh, you know, I upgrade node one. When I'm done, I do node two or do it by little groups. Um, what the work that we, we are doing upstream is introducing version objects in all the uh, talks that can be happening between the, the various components of OpenStack. So that, that will allow us to have version mismatch, one version difference um, between the controller and the nodes and uh, other things like that. Uh, that's uh, mostly landed in Liberty. We still need a few more things uh, in Mitaka for it to be fully operational. And we still have quite a few ideas for the future, but let's only talk to about what is underway already. So I do have up on the screen the QRQ for if you're interested in the reference architecture that we have out, you can hit that and it'll let you download it quickly and easily. Otherwise, just search for Dell, Open, Dell Red Hat OpenStack reference architecture in Google, and you'll find it on the Dell website. No other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.